Hey everyone, Tony Chips here, Chia Pet of Shoes. This is Workshop Live, Scott. Hey! Hey, there he is. Uh, this is Workshop Live. Today we have an F23 foot type, large forefoot varus, relatively neutral, maybe a little bit of a rear foot varus, like up to six degrees. Uh, flat, flexible foot, whole lot of mobility. Uh, when this gentleman is taking a step, there's a lot of inward rotation, pronation of the ankle, the arch. Um, F23 foot types have a whole lot of mobility in their system. Not quite as bad as F24 with the quadriceps foot typing system, but we have a lovely orthotic. Gentleman's had them for a little over two years. It's a four layer, one of our um, uh, types of orthotics that we typically don't do. We went with a th thicker kind of setup with one base layer here at the cork. Uh, gentleman hasn't been in in a while, so we are going to give him a nice little cleanup job to start. Uh, a little acetone and heat to open up the EVA. Uh, one of the main reasons we use EVA for our top covers is that it's antimicrobial, um, it's a closed cell foam, it's heat moldable, it responds to heat very well too. So over time, you'll notice you get these kind of impressions with the toes and everything like that. Um, EVA is one of the most, or it is the most commonly used material in all of footwear. Um, but the beauty of what we use, it's a really high quality material we get from Acor Orthopedics out of Ohio. Great partners for us. And um, I hate orthotics that have fabric top covers to them because a lot of the times the fabric, it just peels away. If you've ever had, ever had an orthotic that is um, fabric covered, it's, you're gonna get them maybe a year or so before they're just completely shredded up. So um, with this EVA material, we like to do it about once every six months, general maintenance on the orthotic itself and just checking it out, making sure any of the modifications we need or had done um, are still holding up. Now, this gentleman, we've tried a few different things. This is shaved flat, but we've tried a, a T4 Met pad in the past. We've tried a little extra heel cushion. Um, we had in the past for the right leg column. He felt like he had too much arch support, so we took it down. We ended up replacing it after about a week or so because he still needed that medial structure to it. So um, he hasn't been in, in uh, I would say, about nine months or so. And he's dealing with some knee pain and on, specifically on the left side, some arch pain, real acute by the navicular bone. So he's dealing with Kind of a real acute pressure and irritation right in that spot right there. Um, a lot of times with a flat flexible foot you're going to be dealing with post tibia tendon issues, a lot of stretching and pulling for that medial column of soft tissue and what we're going to do today is we're going to give him a nice medial wedge. Now we call this like a full medial wedge. We're going from the base to the heel to full to the first metatarsal, okay? Now when we do this, <clears throat> medial wedges, we like to do where you're gonna taper it into closer to the, the lateral aspect of the heel. Lateral wedges, which I don't like, you do from the, the center line of the heel out. For medial wedges, you can taper it in more because the motion of the foot and the body as you're, you're striking, heel strike, um, you want to capture a little bit more of that, that medial pronation and splaying from the initial heel strike forward. So uh, to accommodate uh, or to correct this situation, we're going to be using uh, one of my favorite modification materials. This is cushion cork. It is cork and rubber compound. It is durable. It is spongy but yet very long lasting okay now we're gonna do same thing left and right there is not incongruity with the um, left and right so we're gonna keep everything matched up the same we're currently dealing primarily with issues on the left leg column left knee and left foot but um, Right side is generally happy. This customer is doing 
physical therapy right now three times a week to help the knees out because uh, his doc said he's going knock knee. Now, this gentleman also recently lost a fair amount of weight. So um, that's a good thing. Uh, we are talking about new custom orthotics, and he had these about two and a half years ago. When we make an orthotic, we make a positive mold of a foot, and then from there, we layer all the different materials up, heat mold everything, compression mold everything onto the mold. So when we do this, um, the plaster molds with how we do it, we give them to the customer, and uh, we typically say they can be good for up to 10 years, short of a major waking, reconstructive surgery or injury. And when we do this kind of work, um, the plaster molds, we do the best plaster molds that you will ever see in your entire life. We spend about 45 to 55 minutes per pair. Uh, I got a whole team, tons of plaster over here to make that happen. And it's laborious, but it's important for us to do it the right way. And when we do a mold, um, like I said, as long as there hasn't been a major wake in reconstructive surgery or injury, we can use the, the previous molds for up to 10 years. Seven is usually where we cut things off. So, all right, give you a little review. We have an F23 foot type. Large four foot varus, somewhere around I would say 10 to 15, 12 to 18 degrees cocked to the outside. Rear foot, small rear foot valgus, probably up to about six degrees in motion with full body weight coming down on the heel. Um, F24 foot types have a similar four foot, but a whole lot more rear foot valgus. And um, with this F23, we have some knock need situation. There's a lot of downward pronation and flexibility within the arch. When the foot's taking a step, the arch is naturally just low, not flat, 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 but it's close to that. And there's a lot of inward rotation with the knee. So what we're trying to do, if you can see this modification, is we're taking from the rear foot through the whole arch area, and we're giving it a nice column of extra support, eighth inch multi or cushion cork, Spongy, firm, responsive, works great for this area, holds up. Typically, you can go three times this amount. So when we're doing uh, medial wedges, whether it's just the rear foot heel or full through the arch area, um, you can go max up to about three-eighths of an inch considering what's available on the inside of the shoe. So that's what we got going on. We're going to let this sit for a minute or two, and then uh, we're going to wrap this up. So be right back, folks.
All right, we're back. So, uh, bring it back top down. We have F23 foot type. We have a full heel through the arch, medial wedge, eighth inch cushion cork that we're getting set up on here. Um, when it comes to flatter feet, everybody's body's different. And, you know, we, we see all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, sometimes flatter feet really like a whole lot of extra support. And from a structural standpoint, um, I, I wouldn't say there's any direct correlation to age or health or anything like that. Um, we've had tons of scenarios where flat, flexible feet just like an accommodative solution that's not overcorrecting. Um, when we are dealing with flat, flexible feet with significant weight issues, you have to be really careful of how much, how firm you support that medial column, wholly because the body weight from the top down is going to be carrying that weight over the arch. So when it comes to orthotics and how you look at orthotics and footwear, everything has to be married up together really nicely. So when you think about flat, flexible feet and helping the structural aspect of the foot, ankle, knee, hip, when we deal with this kind of stuff, you also have to consider, okay, what kind of shoes are we dealing with? Because the shoe itself should be a nice wide base. If you have a lot of weight coming down on that medial column, um, anything that rides up against the side there is going to really irritate. And we have a lot of different finishing techniques with how high the wall height is. Um, that's a factor where wall height shouldn't be looked at as a stability structure. It can in certain situations, but wall height should be more about the fit than anything and giving that ankle and arch a little bit more comfort, not to necessarily stabilize. That's what the structure of the shoe and the heel counter is there for. So, um, you know, you always want to look at shoes and inserts as a holistic solution and not just the fact that, oh, I'm, you know, I'm wearing an orthotic. So we're going to take you over to the grinder. Pete's doing some work over there. Looking good, Pete. Uh, I'm going to take this. F23 foot type, nice custom orthotic, four layers. Today we are doing a full arch in your rear foot, medial wedge, modification, eighth inch cushion cork, uh, really spongy, great setup, help stabilize the ankle, knee, hip, whole medial column. Hopefully this does the trick. Gonna give this customer about two weeks to get accommodated with this. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you check us out later. Subscribe, all that good stuff. Chia Petta shoes ain't no better than Chia Petta. Ciao.